Iran and Syria have no chance as states to do us any harm because Iran and Syria are not going to launch an invasion of America. And if they do harm to our interests as the state of Iran or Syria, we will crush them. And they know it, right? So now can they do harm to us through other forms, whether it's Syria funding al-Qaeda and then al-Qaeda does a bombing here at like 9-11? Yes, but Syria is not funding al-Qaeda. The people who actually did hit us are funded mostly by the Saudis and some by the United Arab Emirates, two of our biggest allies in the Middle East. Now, not officially, so that's a little bit different story. But you have to keep things in check and you have to understand things. And the reason I bring that up is, look, one of our great deterrent, but we have a deterrent value here. We tell Iran, Syria, and anybody else in the world, if you mess with us, we're going to bring the wrath of God upon you. But if we say to them instead, hey, listen, Iran and Syria, we know you're not funny, Al-Qaeda. We know you didn't hit us. We know you had nothing to do with the people that hit us, but we're going to hit you anyway. That sends a terrible message. That sends the message of hit America first because they're going to hit you one way or another. Yeah. You know, go get them because they're coming to get you. you. I mean, it's like I wonder if anyone understands that in the administration. Clearly, Bill Crystal doesn't understand. No, that. and I don't want to also. Yeah, that's a good point, Jack. And I, I don't want to also suggest that we're so naive that we think, oh, this is lay off of poor Iran and Syria. I'm not saying that the, the world is the opposite of what Bill Crystal is is saying. Iran and Syria are, are countries that the United States, by the way, has always been concerned with and will continue to be concerned. And but it is simply not so that they are our mortal enemies. But they are already these neocons and guys like Bill Crystal are turning it into a circumstance where they want it as a foregone conclusion that they're not just our enemies, but they're a threat and they're a threat that must be dealt with. And that is not a we, we cannot permit the United States or the general public to have that conversation on those grounds. And they frame the conversation as if there are only two choices. Either we deal with them, and that means military action, or we do nothing and show weakness instead. And those are not the only two options. There's a very real option in the middle, which is di deal with them diplomatically, show carrots and sticks. What we've done for years, for decades, that has brought us success here in the United States of America in all of our uh, actions in, in foreign policy. But instead, these guys, again, it was haunting words. He said it was a great opportunity, that what's happening now in Israel is a great opportunity. The other time they talked about opportunity, these guys from Project for a New American Century, was they said if there was another Pearl Harbor-like event in America, this was pre-9-11, that that would be an opportunity. And it did happen, and they took that as an opportunity to get us into more wars. And they're taking this tragic event as an opportunity to get us into more wars. And that's what we're trying to stop.